Hi, my name is Jeff Amstutz, and I have the, the privilege of being able to do ray tracing for a living, but this talk hopefully will convince you that yes, you can do ray tracing too, because it's a ton of fun. So uh, our lovely host, uh, Michael Case, he gave us a nice plenary talk today uh, to that we should be inspired. So the whole point of this is for you to say, hey, I don't think I can do graphics, I don't think I can do ray tracing, but no, you can too. Now, ray tracing is a technique to do 3D graphics, so we take 3D scenes defined with geometry and try to make a 2D image out of them. And so this is called rendering, and these images are all made with ray tracing. They're actually used with the cycles renderer found in Blender, which is a nice free package you can go get. But the whole idea is these images are really complicated and intricate, but the actual uh, uh, algorithm uh, to make these is a lot simpler than you might think. And the whole concept is we're trying to figure out where did light bounce around in the scene to eventually hit the camera. So what you do in ray tracing is go backwards. You use rays, so an origin and direction, and you go through a pixel in your image and you try to figure out where the light came from. Uh, and so with that, if you have the ability to intersect a ray and a sphere, you can make an image like this, which is pretty cool. However, um, you might still be thinking, wow, that's too complicated. How, how would I know how to make all the colors of those pixels in that scene? Well, that's where this comes in. There's a nice series of books called Ray Tracing in One Weekend, and it's all in the name. The, the first book, these are all free books you can get online. The first one uh, is where you sit down and you learn how to basically make that image. Uh, the second one's called Ray Tracing the Next Week, and then the last one is my favorite, Ray Tracing the Rest of Your Life. So, um, the, the way I figured I would convince people that this really isn't as bad as you'd think is to just walk you through the first step, which is, uh, it, it all fits on one slide. The whole thing, the first thing to teach someone when writing a ray tracer is how do I get pixels into a file uh, from my program? And so, it's a pretty simple program. Yes, do we agree? We could do this. We could put pixels on in a file. And this is actually doing it so simply, because the point is not how to do this fancy. The point is we want to get to the ray tracing part. This is actually just using C out. And then we take that and we pipe it to a file. And if you do that, the way that um, did it, uh, it's basically uh, this previous slide's using the pixel position to determine the color. So you get this nice little gradient. And then you get this. OK, do we agree? That was a pretty easy step. You could write two for loops and you can output some pixels. Great. So. If you can digest that one step, let's just do a few more and you can end up with a ray tracer. So you might figure out, okay, we can now put pixels to the screen, so let's do some rays that go through the camera and do, if they hit a sphere, it's gonna be, the pixel's gonna be red. If it's the background, or if it misses, then it's the background color blue. You can then upgrade that and you can change the color to, if it hit, you can color it by the direction of the normal. So a normal is you have an intersection on a sphere and then what is perpendicular to the sphere at that intersection point. You can then uh, make your scene more interesting because if you just have spheres, you can make a really, really big one and it'll kind of look like a plane. So with that, you can make this slightly more interesting scene. And then we get even better by we start saying, okay, uh, what if I evenly scatter light at that hit point? So up to now, we've just been kind of hit, getting a hit point on the sphere and then making a color. Now we can actually go say, what if we evenly scattered light? Well, then you get an image that looks like that, starting to look cool. We get some illumination effects down at the base. But it gets even better because now with that basic understanding of how to scatter light, which again, a, a slides amount of code can get you that uh, that implementation, you can start making cool things like metal, that's really shiny metal, so you can get the metal look a little more rough, uh, you can get glass, then you can do things like depth of field, like the cool effects you do with a camera. All of these things, these effects that you can implement are really, really short. And that, and really, that gives you all the ingredients to make that picture. And what's really cool is once you get that under your belt, I hope, I hope that you're hooked. So with that, I encourage you to go find these books, they're free and have a blast. And you can even have such a blast that uh, we all know Matt Godbolt, uh, the father of godbolt.org that we all love. He actually gave a talk two years ago um, about how you could use the, these simple uh, ray tracing algorithms to, to explore styles of C++. So it's a fun domain to do graphics, and it's a fun way to explore other programming languages, but it's also a fun way to explore C++. You should go have fun ray tracing rays. So I hope that you're inspired to trace rays. Thanks, everyone.